Good morning, dear friends. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you begin your day and its activities, I pray that God's presence will be with you and you will be conscious of his presence. That is important, that God is watching you. He is listening and he, is, he, he knows the path you take. And let us continue the meditation we began yesterday, following the Lord wholeheartedly. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 35 and 36. Let me read that for you one more time. Not a man of this evil generation shall see the good land I sowed to give your forefathers, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh. He will see it, and I will give him and his descendants the land he set his feet on, because he followed the Lord wholeheartedly. Yesterday we closed with the meditation by the remark that a new generation of Israelites were ready to enter the promised land. Now they required an inspired recounting of God's covenant his law and his faithfulness. Let us continue from this point. The purpose in addressing Israel's new generation is to instruct and uh, exhort them about God's mighty deeds and promises. And second, about their own obligations of faith and obedience. And thirdly, about their need to uh, consecrate themselves to fear the Lord and to walk in His ways and uh, to love and honor Him with all their hearts, soul, and strength. Uh, it is in this context we need to understand the book of Deuteronomy. When Jesus was tempted by the devil, he responded by quoting passages from Deuteronomy. Example, Matthew chapter 4, uh, verse 4, and then again verse 7, and again verse 10. In these three verses, all taken from the book of Deuteronomy, and Jesus faced the devil and defeated him by quoting scriptures from this book of Deuteronomy. And uh, when Jesus was asked, what was the greatest commandment his reply was from Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 37. And uh, you compare it with Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 5. And now let us look into this. He said, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your strength, with all of your spirit, with all of your mind. And the second commandment is equal to that. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now Caleb and Joshua from the old generation were alive to enter into Canaan, the promised land. Look at the reason for this. Because they follow the Lord wholeheartedly. And that is the subject of our meditation. Wholehearted love for God and following. 600,000 people perished in the wilderness. Not because of sickness, poverty, old age, not even because of their enemies. But only because of rebellion and disobedience. And after Moses, Joshua became the leader. 
And Caleb, please see Joshua chapter 10, verse 14. No, these chapters and the verses in these chapters. And in this passage before us, there are four blessings for following wholeheartedly the Lord. Let us consider these one by one. First of all, God will fight for you. Deuteronomy 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 30. That is the first promise. Battles of life are not won by our own strength or wisdom. Consider the problem that the whole world is passing through right now because of COVID-19. For the last nearly six months, all the combined efforts of the nations of the world has not yet succeeded in uh, discovering a, 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 a solution, an injection, a medicine that will wipe out this disease. Now the problem is, once it is made, who will come forward to, 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 to offer himself so that they can experiment this on human? My friends, the world thinks that they, it can manage by itself without God. You know, God has been pushed out of our lives and our consciences. And what is the result? Okay, God is telling us, okay, you manage yourself. You don't need me. And where are the wise? Where are the nobles and the great men? Where are the people who boast themselves as self-sufficient? Who is self-sufficient? My friends, without God, it is impossible. In man's overconfidence, you know, we too make the same mistake that the Israelites made after Jericho. Jericho was a strong city and a very powerful city. And they conquered that city by merely obeying God and doing what God told them to do without any problem. The city was handed over to the people of Israel and they conquered so easily. And the next city was the city of Ai. And the defense ministry decided And we say, we don't need all the services. All these prayer meetings, we only need the Sunday service. Christians would say, all of us are not needed. All the entire family is not necessary. And we over-evaluate our strength at times and abilities. These are our failures and our utter cause of uh, struggle in life. Remember, the battles are not won by chariots and by horses. The battle belongs to the Lord. Never forget it and always remember it. My friend, the second blessing is, the Lord will carry you as a father carries his son. That is a promise. Here is a revelation of a paternal character of our God. And God whom he loves. And God who as a people who will love him and trust him. He takes special care just like a father carrying his child, his son 
in his arms. He carries the first promise was, I will fight for you, your enemies. And the second says, the Lord will carry you. You know, this is the character of God, a fatherly character. God will sustain those who love him, those who serve him and trust him and fear him. Always remember, our responsibilities uh, end a certain point. And beyond that point, we are not responsible. Like a farmer, he is responsible for breaking the ground uh, by plowing the land. He is responsible for the choice of seed that he wants to grow, uh, sow. For the way it is sown. And for the treatment of the field after the seed is sown. He is responsible for the watering and uh, removing the weeds. Beyond this, for the harvest, he is responsible. But in between, there are certain other things. Who needs the clouds for the rain? Is he responsible for light and darkness that are needed? Is he responsible for the calm or sunshine? Is he is the, is the same way in, in, in the same way we are responsible for finding out God's will and for doing that will with all our might. But beyond, God has to carry us. Hallelujah. And this is what happens. No matter how much we do, we must do what we must do and what we can do. But beyond that, there are certain things needed. We are not responsible. That is God's responsibility. And what you cannot do, God will do. When? When you do what you can do. You can sow, but who gives the growth? It is God who causes the seed to grow. By giving rains and giving sunshine and darkness and light, all favorable weather. That is in God's hand, my friends. And the third blessing he promised is, the blessing is God goes ahead of us. He is our shepherd. John chapter 10, John's Gospel chapter 10. Read that whole chapter, which we call a chapter of, of a good shepherd. A good shepherd who owns the sheep, goes always ahead of the sheep. You know why? A loving, uh, only uh, uh, the owner, only the ones who own the sheep will love the sheep. And his voice only recognized by the sheep. A stranger's voice the sheep does not recognize. And why a good shepherd who owns the sheep goes ahead of the sheep? Because he is the one who faces the dangers first. A wild animal, a beast, a lion or tiger or wolves coming to take away the sheep or any other hindrances on the way, it is the shepherd who faces it first. Remember, if you follow the Lord Jesus Christ with your whole heart, he goes ahead of you and he faces everything that happens to you first. Therefore, do not be afraid. Even sickness, even other troubles in life, remember, before you face them, the Lord God, the good shepherd of our soul, he faces and so then you should know that he also has a solution. 
So do not be afraid. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want anything. There is protection in him. There is provision in him. There is strength in him. There is healing in him. There is all success in him. He is everything to his sheep. So follow him. The Lord's blessing be upon you, my friends. He loves you because you are his sheep. He cares for you because you belong to him. Follow him. May the Lord give you grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this instruction for us today. As, we progress, as the day progresses, Lord, may we find ourselves following obediently you, our Good Shepherd. That at the end of the day, we will comfortably go to bed and go to our rest in the night, knowing that the same God will be with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Amen.